Hello, this is Ray Hilborn. <clears throat> I'm a professor at the University of Washington and was involved in the MLPA as a member of the science advisory team for two of the four regions. Marine protected areas are a tool advocated by a large group of NGOs and marine conservation scientists and over 190 states have agreed to the Convention on Biodiversity's goal of uh, at least by 2020, at least 10% of coastal and marine areas are conserved through well-connected systems of protected areas and other effective area-based conservation measures. The IUCN Parks Congress voted to make 30% a goal rather than 10%. As with any management action, we want to know if they work and specifically have they achieved their stated objectives. This slide shows the network of MPAs set up in the South Coast region, one of the four regions where NLPAs, MLPA uh, set up reserves. Uh, the Marine Life Protection Act in California is perhaps the largest network of MPAs that were designed with extensive input from stakeholders and scientists and have specific written objectives. So over the last two years, a group of us have looked at the MLPA and its stated objectives and asked, is it possible to evaluate whether the MLPA met its objectives? I want to stress that we're not trying to determine if the MLPA met its objectives, only to ask if it's possible to, to determine if it did. We hope in doing this analysis that we can provide advice, both for future monitoring of the MLPA and also the design of objectives and evaluation of other M MPA designations. Of the six stated objectives of the MLPA, we identified these two to be the most important for evaluating the ecological impact. This makes clear that the intent is to have more abundance of individual species, but also to maintain the structure, function, and integrity of the marine ecosystem. Abundance has been intensively monitored. Structure, function, and integrity are not defined and would be much harder to quantitatively evaluate. So let's concentrate on the specific question, can it be determined if the abundance of marine life increased due to the MLPA? Most evaluation of other MPAs has been comparing inside to outside of closed areas and almost always shows that, if enforced, abundance is higher inside than outside. The scientific benchmark for such evaluation is called the before and after control impact design. For instance, this paper looked at the Channel Islands Marine Reserves, which preceded the MLPA, but was also in the South Coast region of California. What we see in these data is that the abundance of targeted species went up inside reserves and went down outside. That's exactly what one would expect when you close some areas to fishing and the fishing fleets move to areas outside the closed areas. You're fishing harder outside after the MPA than you did before the MPAs were established. Given objectives one and two of the MLPA, is the total abundance of the species of interest higher because of the MPAs? It's not are there more ins fish inside the reserves after establishment of the closed area, Rather, it's the abundance of both inside and outside. Most analysis of other MPAs has used the areas outside the closed areas as control. That is as an estimate of what would have happened if the MPAs had not been established. The statistical analysis asked the abundance inside is higher than outside. This is clearly wrong. Assuming that effort has been displaced outside the closed areas, and this is almost always the case, you can't use areas outside as controls. There have been some efforts to use other forms of control. Dan Ovando and his PhD thesis at UCSB used the abundance of non-targeted species as the control. This assumes that non-targeted species are impacted by the same environmental conditions as the targeted species. This is the estimated of abundance species compared to non-targeted species from Ovando's uh, thesis. 
The red vertical line is the, the year the uh, MPAs were established, and the black vertical line represents the uncertainty. Obanda found there's no difference in the trend of abundance of targeted species and non-targeted species. And if anything, the targeted species have overall declined in the region as a result of the MPA in the last three years. But there are reasons the non-targeted species might not be a perfect control. So the bottom line is it'll be very difficult, if not impossible, to evaluate objectives one and two of the MLPA. You would need, need both before and after data and true control sites. It's worth noting that the MLPA legislation was fueled by the decline of a number of West Coast groundfish stocks, and some might think that their recovery in the last 20 years is due to the MLPA. This is simply not true. The overfished groundfish uh, stocks are rarely found in the state MPAs, and it was a range of management actions by the federal regulators that led to the rebuilding. Objective three is about recreational educational opportunities. Marine reserves are often very popular sites for diving and scientific study. If data are collected on the activities, the impact of the MLPA on recreation and science could be evaluated. Science aspect will be a bit difficult to evaluate because much of the science in the MLPA no-take areas has been driven by the evaluation. We did not find there'd been any monitoring of recreation and scientific use that could be used to evaluate the performance relative to this goal. The design of the MLPA was built around representative habitats, but as in objective one and two, we need to ask not only how much better did protected areas become, but how much worse did other areas become due to effort displacement. Essentially, all of the coastal ecosystems are protected by a range of regulations on fishing, oil exploration, et cetera. So like objectives one and two, we need to ask if these habitats are doing better after the MLPA and the conditions of the same habitats outside the closed areas should be included. The guiding criteria of the MLPA design was built around specific representative habitats. So one could argue the objective was met simply by the implementation of the act. But I would argue you can't just look at the no-take areas. You has to have to ask if natural heritage, habitats throughout the region uh, are in better shape because of the MLPA. We've seen that the objectives uh, are not really very clear enough to uh, provide for possible evaluation. So in general, uh, I would say that, the, that, that it's going to be difficult to determine uh, some of some of the uh, of this uh, CDFW does collect data on infractions both inside and outside closed areas, and the CDFW staff could probably provide an evaluation of the effectiveness of enforcement. Uh, sound scientific guidelines: uh, the size and spacing guidelines were the rules of thumb based on judgments of scientists, but they've been shown to be actually not provide very good guidance for effective network design by a paper out of UCSB by Andrew Rosswater. Models were available to both evaluate the impact of alternative designs proposed by stake, uh, stakeholders, but they have not been, uh, but they uh, had not been available during the first regional study. They were not used and the, uh, and the size and spacing guidelines were used instead. This was a mistake and future MPA designs should be should use models to help design and evaluate alternatives. The MLPA certainly had the de uh, network design based on the spacing guidelines, but it isn't clear in the, uh, if, in the objectives exactly what is meant. The network concept is taken from terrestrial reserves where often almost all the biodiversity is inside parks. Uh, the network is supposed to allow for the movement between parks so the populations are not isolated. We really can't see how you would evaluate network effectiveness. So in conclusion, the major objectives of having more marine life, it's really hard to evaluate due to a lack of controls. New studies should be very clear about objectives around local versus regional abundance and 
of what, what should have more pre-impact data. For almost all the other objectives, the question is whether the interest is only in the closed areas or if the objective should be judged across the entire region. The MLPA was a large scale experiment in MPA design and implementation. Our analysis suggests that few, it's a, few of its objectives could be evaluated for two reasons. The objections are often too vague and need to be much clearer. If the success is, and secondly, is the success measured regionally or only in closed areas? Perhaps the most difficult problem is controls. They are difficult to identify. Without controls, you can't evaluate the impact of closed areas compared to the background environmental change. Thank you very much.